Good morning, folks. We're expecting minor solar wind variations tonight off the edge of a CME mixing with a coronal hole stream. But it will be minor, and we've got other things to focus on today, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were indeed quiet. Minor flaring only from the developing sunspot group, coronal hole facing Earth today and connecting magnetically for an earthquake watch. More on that in a moment, but first, here's the 24-hour progression of the sunspots. Slightly fewer umbra in number, but the distending continues with minor signatures on the south as well. Alaska took a 6.1 earthquake overnight, and the concern is that it's only the first part of an uptick after we went 10 days without a magnitude 6 event. Blood echoes all over the place, making for a forecaster's nightmare. Alaska likely was not the only face of this uptick. Speaking of quakes, thought it would be nice to share the latest earthquake and tsunami animation from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. All the quakes and tsunamis going back to 1921. Interesting that the spread and peak aspects of the tsunamis look like lightning. And since we end the animation on the 2011 Japan quake, let's go to a confirmation that it dinged the GPS. It excited a number of geodesy aspects, including a tilting of the entire planet. It was a tilt back towards normal from the 2010 Chile quake tilt, but still a tilt nonetheless. Now let's shift gears because it's been a while since I've seen scientists remember that the mid-Pleistocene transition makes absolutely no scientific sense at all. For a while, the Earth was on a 41,000-year ice age cycle, but half a million years ago it switched to the 100,000-year cycle, and nobody really knows why. They still don't know, and whatever it was, it's on a grander scale than the 12,000-year cycle, the harmonic with axial and apsidal precession, and the 100,000-year cycle itself. It completely changed the behavior of the planet, if not the entire solar system, and we still don't know what it is. Stepping down to that 12,000-year cycle, the last great disaster was the Gothenburg magnetic excursion and Younger Dryas cold event. This paper on the impactor hypothesis is a pretty good one. Randall Carlson and I will probably be chatting about it in the next day or so. But now is the moment to recall our examination of this same evidence regarding the recurring solar micronova being the cause instead. If you are new here, scoff not. This is the reason why only about 20 professors and NASA scientists were interested in our work before 2018, and now it's over 100. Because for all the evidence that an impactor occurred at the Younger Dryas, some of the isotopes don't match an impactor. Nothing about the impactor would cause the magnetic excursion of Earth. And since these are on a cycle, where's the cycle progenitor for these impactors and magnetic excursions? Well, a nova pushes small meteors in its path, not to mention has dense portions itself that could cool and congeal into impacting pieces. Impactors are part of the micronova story, as well as the climate issues and wildfires from the Younger Dryas. And the cycle itself and isotopes require more than just an impactor at the start of the Holocene. In that vein, veteran observers, how many times have we said they are just missing most of the nova events in the galaxy? Here, they're saying their best guess is four times as many as we can see, due to dust blocking the light, with the bottom of the window being three times as many. This, of course, hints at the greater range and triggering scenarios for supernova and the smaller recurrent nova, and one of those in particular, NGC 6302, embodies one of our most key points. Folks, this is a recurrent nova, young in its evolution, and like all such events, their first guess is a close-in binary star system at the center, feeding material from one to another and going boom. But as is the case with so many of these smaller recurrent nova, they don't see two stars in the center, they only see one. They claim that it is obscured somehow, but given all the other instances we've seen, the one with no degenerate binary, another that wandered lonely into a molecular cloud and exploded by itself. Folks, this is the reason why every time they get a close-in look at these things, they say something like this. They're using a model that has little to do with reality in many recurrent Nova scenarios, including the one we're going to have on the sun. With those happy thoughts in mind, I'm going to try tonight to get you the special video I mentioned at the end of the show yesterday, putting the recent Earth and Mars changes in their places of the larger solar system shift, including the Sun, with the next 12,000 year event likely in our lifetimes. Hopefully that special video will be tonight. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open.
no fear. Be safe, everyone.